the fourth station of the cross. Jesus meets his afflicted mother. Now, Jesus fell headlong in the street from the weight of his cross and was helped to his feet and made to resume his journey. The people in the cathedral moved slowly and looked to the fourth station to see a woman standing along the dusty road. Her arms are outstretched toward Jesus as he slowly comes along the crowded street. We adore thee, O Christ, and we bless thee, because by thy holy cross thou hast redeemed the world. Consider the meeting of the Son and the Mother that took place on this journey. Jesus and Mary looked at each other, and their looks became as so many arrows to wound those hearts which loved each other so tenderly. And thou, my Queen, who was overwhelmed with sorrow, obtain for me by thy intercession a continual and tender remembrance of the passion of thy Son. The Passover was at hand, and Mary came down to Jerusalem, as was the custom of her people, to make sacrifice and to worship at the temple. Mary was greatly troubled in her heart. For the years since she had consented to conceive the Son of God had taught her how heavy was her responsibility. Joseph, her husband, was dead, and now she alone knew who her son was. She had seen but little of him since he did her bidding at the marriage feast at Cana, and she rejoiced that he was in Jerusalem and that she might see him again. She was staying with some of the women who followed Jesus, and among them was Mary Magdalene, who praised Jesus at every opportunity. And one of the Pharisees shouted out, I was a sinner and had no right to anoint Jesus. But Jesus rebuked them all and told me to go in peace. And did you see Jesus again? Oh, yes. At Bethany, six days before this Passover. How was he? He seemed tired and very sad. I saw him as he was eating with the twelve. I had some nard and went in. I know it was a bold thing to do, but I did it. Don't stop, Mary. I'll introduce you after you've finished. Well, as I said before, I anointed his feet. This time there was a great clamor, and from his disciples, that dark-bearded one, Judas, shouted out, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? That would have been Judas. So like him, always thinking of shekels and denarii. I think some of the others agreed. But Jesus silenced them very quickly. What did he say, Mary? He reminded them that the poor would always be about. But they would not always have him. What was that? He said that the poor would always be about. But the rest of it. But he wouldn't be with them always. And he went on to say that in pouring the ointment over him, I had done it for his burial. For his... Mary, what is it? Are you ill? No. No. Let me get you some wine, but let me introduce you. Women, this is Mary, mother of Jesus. Oh. This is Mary of Magdala and oh. Elizabeth. It's blessed you are to have such a son. Here's some wine. Drink it, Mary. It'll make you feel better. Thank you. Wine? Why, Mary, you must have been present when he changed the water to wine at Cana. Yes, I was there. Oh, tell us all about it. Mary, did you see him do it? What did he say? What, what did he say? Oh, please, don't ask her to. I'll call the others. You must tell us all about him. We want to know everything from the time he was little. I'm sure he was a perfect child and gave you no trouble. He gave Joseph and me no trouble. Once, when he was about 14, he was lost for three days. Lost for three whole days? You must have gone out of your mind. Where was he? We found him in the temple talking to the rabbis about the scriptures. Think of that. 
A boy of 14 discussing scriptures. It's just too wonderful to believe. But there's one question I always ask myself. What is that? Where will it all end? I mean, he won't go on as he has forever, Mary. You should know. When will he deliver Israel and proclaim his kingdom? What you ask me, I don't know. Surely he's taken you into his confidence. It's but natural he would tell his mother. You must remember I've seen my son only a few times since that day at Cana. Of course, I hear from time to time what he's been doing. When next you see him, you should ask when the kingdom will be. Everyone's asking, where do all these miracles lead? When will he raise up an army of angels and drive out the Romans and make Israel all-powerful among the nations of the earth? You will see him, won't you, while in Jerusalem? Yes. I'll not leave the city until I've seen him. Come in. It's good to see you. Is Mary here? Yes, on the roof. Is she alone? Yes, right up those stairs. John, is there anything wrong that you want to see her alone? No, no. I, I just want to bring her word of Jesus' plans for the Passover feast. Then go to her. I'll stand close to the stair and see that you're not interrupted. And Mary of Magdala told me what he said when she anointed him at Bethany for his burial job. I remember the words. And shortly after, he sent two disciples into Jerusalem to find a colt for him. They found it exactly as he said they would. And he rode it into Jerusalem in triumph. A colt? The foal of an ass? Yes, it was. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king will come to thee, the just and savior. He is poor and riding upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Appoint a solemn procession with leafy branches, even to the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I give thanks to thee. Mary, where did you know all this? I'm not a learned rabbi, but I have listened to them saying the scriptures. Every passage which tells of my son. Every woman of Israel knows how he was to be born. And every daughter of Zion secretly hoped that she would be chosen. You don't know how they jeered at me in Nazareth and whispered behind my back. And how I had to go before the magistrate. And how Joseph stood by me. John, there is nothing written or said by the prophets I have not considered. But, Mary, do you understand? Not everything, for much is hidden. But this I know, for it was said to me, to me, John, by Simeon at the presentation. Behold, this child is destined for the fall and for the rise of many in Israel and for a sign that shall be contradicted. And thy own soul a sword shall pierce that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. And now in this house I begin to feel the point of the sword from the words of Mary Magdala. This ointment is for my burial. But why do you come, John? Oh, to tell you that Jesus will celebrate the feast of the Passover with the twelve at the house of Mark's father. Then I am not to see him again. He did not say. Only that I come and tell you of this. John, you know him better than any. Has his time come? I cannot say. But it's well known the priests have plotted to kill him. Must he be brought then like a lamb to the slaughter? So it's been foretold. But must it be? God has his design. That cannot be changed. And men can only speculate as to the time and the place it will be completed. 
Men cannot change it, but God can. Twice your son has told us how he would die. On the Roman's cross. Cannot, will not God find another lamb to sacrifice? Even as he saved Sarah's son from Abraham's knife. Mary, do you not know why he was brought into the world? That he shall be great and called the son of the most high. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Even so. And all this will come to pass as promised. Jesus tells us that he must suffer many things in order that it be accomplished. God is all-powerful. The sower of life, the reaper of death. Can he not take away the sins of the world without the blood of my son? His son too, Mary. His only begotten son, whom he loved. Mine is a mother's love for her child, and it is stronger than death. I'll not give him up. Oh, woman, will you stand against the will of God? John, I am flesh and blood, and he ate and drank of me for the months he was in my womb. You were the cradle wherein God raised the Savior of mankind. Of my free will, I consented to the angel of the Lord for his conception. Can I not then consent to or deny the sacrifice? Would you deny the salvation to those who will come after? Would you say to the daughters of Israel, you and your children are lost because I am his mother and I love him? More than life itself. That is the way he loves us all. Father in heaven, I am your handmaiden. Have pity on me. Never separate me from my son. Whatever he must suffer, spare me not, and let his humiliation be mine. Blessed art thou, Mary. You must go now. Yes, we're preparing for the feast. I have something for him. Oh, a cloak. I hurried to finish it. I used only the soft wool of the lamb. Oh, this is fine work, Mary. No scenes. No I wanted it to be all of one piece. Go now and say to him that his will is mine. John returned to the house where the feast was to be celebrated. Mary stayed on the roof until it was time for the feast in the house of the women. And then she went down to them. And soon after the feast was over, she went to her bed. For she did not wish to be burdened with questions from the others. And Mary slept fitfully until about the twelfth hour, at which time she was awakened by a distant sound. Mary? Mary? Here, at the window. Did you hear something? Listen. It must be midnight. They're changing the watch. I'm sorry. I hope I didn't awaken you. It's all right. I wasn't asleep. Wait. What is it? It's not the watch. There's too many men for that. Then what do you think? Listen. Soldiers, Romans, they've changed their direction. They've been marching toward Gethsemane. Oh, Mary. What is it? Why do you look at me like that? Gethsemane is the place where Jesus often goes with the twelve to pray and be alone. find out nothing. Did you go to the high priest's house? The watch turned me back. They said a woman should not be out at this hour. They either did not know what had happened or would not tell me. What is the hour? It'll soon be dawn. 
Are you sure the returning soldier stopped at the high priest's house? I could only judge from the sound. They moved in that direction. The day is here. Soon we can go out. What? John! Oh, I, I can stay but a moment. What has happened? Jesus is arrested. No. What? They've taken him to the high priest. We were at the garden. Judas betrayed Jesus and led the guards to him. Where are the others? We've scattered. The last I saw of Peter, he was following Jesus in the crowd at a distance. I, I don't know where the others are. I'm looking for them. What can the high priest do to him? They'll ask him, are you the son of God? And when he answers, they'll say he's blasphemed and condemn him to death. But he is. Yes. The... Yes, Mary. He'll be condemned for telling the truth. But Pilate will have to approve the sentence. Well, Pilate cares nothing about our laws, and he despises the high priest. That's our one hope. But I must go find the others. I'll send word where we are as soon as I can. Mary, where are you going? To the temple. Now the temple was not far from the Antonia, which was the dwelling place of Pilate, and the fortress of the Roman cohorts. Already the streets were filled with people, but they did not know Christ had been arrested, for the high priests were anxious that he be removed with as little disturbance as possible. And Mary entered the court of the women and spent much of the morning in prayer. Forgive me, O oh Lord, that I seemeth to fight against thy will. I am thy servant, thy handmaiden, the bearer of thy son. This be his hour for which he was brought into the world. I humbly beseech thee to let me share it with him. The world cannot be redeemed but by his life. Then I beg of you, let me share his suffering, for I am his mother. Mary. Mary. What is it? Why have you come here? Peter and John sent me to get you. John is waiting for you at the house. Peter is keeping watch near the praetorium. What's happened to him? Good news, Mary. Pilate examined Jesus and said he could find no fault in him. Then he is free. No. Pilate sent him to Herod because he discovered he's a Galilean. But if Pilate found no fault... Come, John is waiting. He'll tell you more. I spread the news about Jesus' arrest. And then I ran into Peter doing the same thing. But Herod put John the Baptist to death, and he hates Jesus. But no one can be put to death without permission from Pilate. And Pilate's already said Jesus is innocent. In the end, he'll be sent back to Pilate, even if Herod does approve of the high priest's decision. Where's Peter? He stands away from the crowd to see what happens. But isn't he in danger? I, I thought we were all in danger at first, but I've moved about without being questioned. It's... Only Jesus they're interested in. Why then has not Peter come? Mary, Peter's very ashamed. He reproaches himself. He... Why should Peter be ashamed to see me? Mary, at the supper last night, Peter was telling Jesus how he would gladly die for him. And Jesus told Peter he would deny him three times before the cock crows. And did he? Yes. Herod sent him back. Listen. In triumph, the people acclaim. Well, I'll, I'll go see what's happening. You women better stay here. Oh, John, hurry back to us. What's keeping him? Why is everything so still? A little while ago, everyone was shouting. 
I couldn't hear the words. It was a man's name, it seemed. But it was not Jesus. John. Mary. Did Pilate... Pilate has washed his hands of Jesus. And my son is to die. He blew hot and cold. He had Jesus scourged and thought that would satisfy them. But it didn't. Then he gave them a choice of Jesus or a murderer named Barabbas. That's the name they shouted. They chose the murderer to be released. And what of Jesus? Crucify him, they shouted. And Pilate washed his hands. They're lifting the cross on him. I shall go to him. Oh, no. Peter begs you not to look upon him as he is. Please stay here, Mary. It will only add to his pain to see you. Now I, I must return. Mary. Oh, Mary. Do not weep for me, child. For I am his mother. You will go to him. Now. Let me by. Please, let me by. Mary. Mary, you shouldn't have come. Unless God strike me dead, I will go to my son. She knelt in the dust in his path and uplifted her arms to him. And he saw her. And his lips moved as if trying to form a word. But his mouth was filled with dust, and it choked him. But Mary knew, and all the women in the crowd knew, the word Jesus tried to say. And many of them whispered it to themselves, so it seemed that he said the word with many voices. And they wept. Now, because the Sabbath was soon to begin, the soldiers pushed Jesus on. And when he had passed, a woman came from the crowd and reached down and helped Mary to her feet. You are his mother. Yes. My son is with him. And many say your son is the Messiah. And if that is so, you're the mother of the Messiah. What do you want of me? Ask Jesus to forgive my son. Who is your son? He walks behind Jesus. He carries the second cross. His name is Dismas. Now the procession halted a few steps beyond, and the soldiers were gathered about Jesus. And some of them were saying he would die before he reached Golgotha from the weight of the cross. The high priests did not want this to happen, and they argued that someone should be pressed into service to help him. Looking about, they saw a stout fellow, and they said to him, Come here and help this man carry his cross. <laughs> 